بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ولكم once again to our series of journeying through the Quran last time we were talking about Surah Al Imran and today we're going to make a commencement on Surah An Nisa the women um, Alhamdulillah it's a long Surah like most of the early Surahs of the Quran uh, it spreads over 200 approximately ayat of the Quran and it contains many many lessons concepts stories uh, amongst them, and I'll let's start off with this actually, is the laws of inheritance. And the laws of inheritance are clearly outlined in, in, in two passages in Surah uh, An-Nisa. At the beginning and the last ayah, so it's called Ayatul Kalala. And it's actually said to be the last verse of the Quran to be revealed. Um, and it's something that we actually studied this year on Al-Huda courses with our students. And um, it was a real uh, great experience because we went through the laws of how much the father inherit if the children die. Um, there's a, you know, the son inherit when the father dies, their spouses, and it was really interesting. And all the students were like, you know, wow, subhanAllah, we didn't know that we have so much detailed laws about inheritance. You know, it was amazing. It was an eye opener for everybody, and we, they really enjoyed it. And they actually now uh, are able to uh, calculate their own inheritance and what would happen if they died or if somebody from family member died, and what would happen to the money and the inheritance. And it's a law of Islam. It's something that we need to know. It's in the Quran al Karim. Um, something that we, you know, alhamdulillah, we happen to uh, cover in our courses uh, last year and hopefully we'll continue with this uh, next year as well. So please do watch out for such courses. Um, another concept, another idea in Surah Al-Imran is the idea of trusts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَن تُؤَدُّ الْأَمَانَةِ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا Surely Allah commands you to return the trusts to their people. This is an amanat, these are the trusts. We always say this, it's an amanah, it's a trust. This concept is, is throughout the Quran, the Prophet ﷺ is known as a sadiq al-ameen, the truthful one and the trustworthy one. He would always fulfill his trusts. He wouldn't let anybody down. He wouldn't be late on payment of debts. He wouldn't, you know, he'd, he'd be the best of people. Uh, he'd be the faithful, most faithful of people. He'd fulfill his trust, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we have many trusts placed upon us, the trust and the responsibility of obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of looking after other people, of fulfilling obligations, is a trust which we must fulfill in our lives. And this is mentioned in this ayah of the Quran. The actual story behind this is, is that when the Prophet والسلام, he came back at the conquest of Mecca, which we said occurred in the month of Ramadan. And at that time, many uh, roles were being exchanged. The, the Muslims were taking over from the Kuffar, people were becoming in charge of certain rights of the Holy House. One of the rights of the house is the, the key keeper to the Kaaba. The one who keeps the key to the Kaaba. And the one who kept the key to the Kaaba was from the Quraysh and he wasn't a Muslim. Um, and you know, the Muslims have come and taken over uh, the land and they've conquered Makkah. Uh, the Prophet وسلم, was thinking of what to do with the, the custodianship of the Kaaba and who should have the key to open the door to the Kaaba as is the tradition now. And the Prophet وسلم, knew and in his, in his wisdom وسلم, he knew that whoever he gives this to Nobody can take it away from him because the Prophet gave it to him. The Prophet gave it to that family, that tribe, that clan. So the Prophet decided to give it to the person who had that right already and he gave it to that person. Until this day, the family, the descendants of that person have the keys to the Kaaba and nobody has the right to take it from them. This is fulfilling a trust, fulfilling a promise that the Prophet would always do. He was Al-Ameen. One of the other concepts in Surah al Surah Al-Nisa there's many things to talk about. One of them is uh, the actual Quran itself. Allah SWT asks us about the Quran and asks us to reflect in a rhetorical question. He says, Do they not ponder over the Quran? This book we're going through in different um, sections and talking about different concepts and different themes and topics. But the whole idea is to reflect over the Quran. Do they not reflect over the Quran? I'll ask this question, and it's a question to the disbelievers because the question is, and it continues, had it been from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا They would have found in it much discrepancy. They would have found in a lot of contradictions, in other words. But we find the Quran is a perfect book. It has no contradictions. It has the stories of the previous prophets. It has predictions of the future. It has guidelines. It has commands. It has, a, it's a challenge for us. It asks us to reflect on ourselves, on the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is around us. It, it's a book that engages us. So we need to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us and commands us, to reflect, to ponder, to contemplate on these words. And this is the month of Ramadan, the month of the Quran. And this is something that we should 
aim to do during this month to pick up the Quran to read a translation of the Quran to find some meaning in the Quran that affects us and is part of our lives I hope we do this I hope we really benefit from these reminders and from pondering over the Quran Kareem Barakallahu feekum Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh